Um, this is Mandy. Everyone say hi, Mandy. Hi. Good morning. Mandy works at the Snow Health Center. Um, she oversees many of the departments there, um, specifically towards um, health, pharmacy, health services. And she also oversees the health insurance program here at the university. So Mandy's going to go into a lot of detail to help you understand how to use your health insurance plan, what it is, and what to do when you get sick so you know what to do before you're feeling miserable. All right? Um, can you guys hear me okay with this one? Yeah. Okay. And if not, just kind of wave your hand and then I'll move to this one if I need to. All right, thank you guys all for coming um, and sitting through this. It's um, going to be very informative, not the most exciting presentation ever, but it's important information for you to know on um, how to use the student insurance policy. So what is health insurance and are you required to have it? So health insurance provides protection against the risk of financial loss resulting from an uninsured person's sickness, accidental injury, or disability. Or disability. And yes, you are required to have it. Immigration and university regulations require F and J visa holders to have sufficient coverage. Why is it important? So healthcare in the United States in the United States is very good, but it's also very expensive. Um, so if an accident or illness were to happen, you could incur a huge financial um, burden because of that. So health insurance helps protect you from these high costs and ensures the best care by providing coverage for healthcare services. So policy and coverage. So it's an injury and illness policy. So if you essentially get sick or injured, this policy is going to have coverage for you. The health benefit covers up to $500,000 per policy year. So from September 1st through the end of August of 2014. <coughs> um, surgery is covered as long as it is a result of an accident or illness. So it doesn't cover elective surgeries. And then um, the main policy that you were all enrolled on does not include dental or vision unless it's due to an injury or illness. So example would be if you have pink eye, that would be covered. Or if you fall down and chip a tooth, there would be coverage for that. Um, but as far as the main policy itself, it does not cover vision and dental for things like contacts, dental cleanings, and, and things like that. However, we have um, worked with United Healthcare this year to offer a dental and vision coverage. Um, they can be purchased separately. And you can come in our office or go online to do that. However, if you are wanting to enroll in either the dental or the vision, or both, you need to do so by September 15th. So how this policy works is that there are primary care providers um, and in-network and out-of-network providers. So the, your primary care provider would be the um, medical doctors and clinicians at Snow Health Center, um, University Health Services, so our building, yes. Yes, yeah, I'm, I apologize. The date on there does say after the work 15th. That was just me um, and putting the information incorrectly. So the correct date is September 15th if you want to enroll in the vision or dental. Thank you. So primary care providers are those um, here at Snow Health Center on campus. We can see you for medical appointments. We have um, a laboratory in our building that can do any sort of specimen collection, lab draws, things like that. And we also have a full, um, full service pharmacy in our building. So if you are within 50 miles of Ypsilanti and of our health center, you are required to come to us for services. If you are traveling outside of this area, there are other in-network providers that you can go to where you will have coverage. If you are seeing somebody in this area, you will need to have a referral from us to do so, and I will talk about that in a, in a few minutes. So um, in-network providers, so like I said, Snow Health Center is your primary. Cofinity um, Network is your secondary, so if you're in the state of Michigan, it would be Cofinity Insurance. So if you have a referral to go to St. Joe's or if we're closed and you go someplace in the area, don't tell them that you have insurance through United Healthcare. You want to tell them you have insurance through Cofinity, and that's how they'd be able to look you up in the system. And then if you're outside of the state of Michigan but still in the United States, it's um, Private Healthcare Systems or PHCS and they will be able to find you in that um, larger system. So in-network cost. If you are seen outside of the health center, you have a $100 deductible plus 20% of your bill. So if you are seen, um, say we're closed, or say we sent you to a specialist, if your bill is $200, you pay the first 100, 
United Healthcare would pay the $80 and then you would pay the remaining $20. However, there is a maximum out-of-pocket cost, so you would not pay more than $2,500 per policy year. So say you have something horrible happen, say you need to have your appendix removed. You would not pay out of pocket more than $2,500 for the entire year. And then after that, the insurance companies covers the rest of the charges up to $500,000 for that policy year. Out of network costs are a little bit different. You still have that same $100 deductible, but you pay 30% of the bill instead of 20%. And then their maximum out of pocket cost is quite higher, so it is $10,000 per policy year. And then United Healthcare would pay the remaining up to um, $500,000 per policy year. It says 100. I'm sorry, it's 500. So urgent care. If you were um, in, if you were ill when we were closed, we would recommend that you go to an urgent care facility over an emergency room. And how they're different is <coughs> urgent care is a facility facility dedicated to the delivery of medical services um, outside of the ER. So it's something that you need help with, but it's not an emergency. You're not. Um, needing rapid treatment for a, for a pretty sudden illness or a trauma. How do referrals work? So if you are wanting to be seen outside of the health center, so say someone comes in and they're having some abdominal pain, we don't think it's urgent, but there's just something that's kind of going on that's been happening for a while, we would want to send you to a specialist. And what we would do is write you a referral from our clinicians to this specialist. If you do not receive a referral before going to the specialist, you are responsible for the charges. There are some certain situations where a referral is not needed. So those would be, um, if it's an emergency room, please go to the emergency room if it's an emergency. If you've fallen down, um, you've broken your leg really bad, if you're bleeding from your head, if you had any sort of head drama, go to the emergency room. Um, if we're closed, you obviously can't get a referral from us if we're closed. So there's weekends um, during those long breaks between semesters. Um, during um, university holidays, we're closed. So if you need care and cannot wait until the following business day when we're open, then we would uh, you don't need a referral for that. However, we do recommend that you follow up with us so that we can give you the proper um, information anyways and send that to the insurance company. Again, if you're, out of, if you're more than 50 miles away from our clinic, you do not need a referral for that, but you will have those deductibles and co-insurance you're responsible for. Uh, for maternity services, we um, can help diagnose that you're pregnant, but once you are determined to be pregnant, we would recommend you um, seek outside care, and we would be able to provide you a referral for that if you are interested, but if you already have someone that you want to go to, we recommend that you check and make sure they're in network, but again, you don't need a referral for that as well. And then mental illness treatment. We do have a psychiatrist on our staff, um, but his schedule can get pretty busy. So if there's someone that you either you don't want to wait, or if you know somebody that you want to go to, um, again, you'll have the deductible, but you do not need to have a referral for that service either. So this is kind of a chart of how um, your payments are, or your responsibility for paper or for cost is. So when you're seen here at the health center, your doctor visits or lab work, there's a $10 copay for. Again, when you're seen outside, it's a $100 deductible and either 20 or 30% is covered, um, is your responsibility. Prescriptions are either $10 or $20, depending on what the prescription is. Most of them are going to be $10. Some are even less than that if the prescription costs less than that to us. Most generic forms of birth control are also covered on the policy at no cost, so there wouldn't even be a copay for those. And then um, mental health treatment, again, there's a $10 copay to see our psychiatrist. And then if you are seen outside, if your um, psychiatrist cannot submit the claim, you may, may have to do so on your own. Yes? I'm sorry, yes. <laughs> Thank you. So I say this so often that it just comes as second nature. Okay. Um, so from this chart, you can tell that it's best to come to the health center for services because it's going to cost you the least amount of money. Plus, you've already paid for the premium. So come, use us, pay your $10 copay. There are some services that are free um, when you're on the policy as well. And so those services would be preventative care. So when you perform at the Snow Health Center by our clinicians, the policy provide um, many services for free. So there's a general well visit that everyone on the policy is entitled to. This is a, a physical exam plus various screenings that are determined based on your age, your family history, and your health history. So for men um, in their 30s and 40s, it may cover a cholesterol screening. 
um, just as an example. Or if you have a family history of diabetes, we would do a diabetes screen. And the clinician that you see will help go through what screenings are appropriate for you. But when you have that visit, you don't even have to pay the $10 copay for that. All those services are just covered up for free. So women get two free preventative exams a year. They get that general well visit where they can talk about general concerns, but they also get a women's um, gynecological exam. So this would be your standard exam that women <coughs> receive when they go to um, a gynecologist. Uh, it includes the pap test, some STI testing, and things of that nature, and then any concerns they have can be brought up at that time as well. And we also do um, an immunization review. So what you can do is come and see our nurses. They will go over your immunization history if you have it. If you have your records, that's great. If not, you can let them know what vaccines you think you have. Um, have had in your home country or here since you've been to the states and what they'll do is they can provide you with the vaccines that are appropriate for again your age and your what they say is lifestyle so if you're living um, on campus or you're living in an apartment complex there are certain vaccines that they may say put you at a higher risk so they want to vaccinate you for those such as meningitis so if you receive vaccines like the flu shot the tdap which is a tetanus diphtheria pertussis vaccine or the meningitis vaccine those, for example, would all be free for you. You wouldn't have to pay any sort of copay for your visit or pay for those vaccines. And some of those vaccines are upwards of $100 to $200. So I would just say, if you're interested, I would recommend that you come in to do a vaccine or immunization review with one of our nurses and utilize the insurance as much as you can because, like we said, you are paying for it. So we're going to go through a few scenarios, and you guys can just kind of yell at me what you think you would do in that situation. So it's a Wednesday morning and you wake up and you're not feeling, and you're still not feeling better. You've had a sore throat and a cough for two days that just won't seem to go away. What would you do? Get a referral. Snow Health Center, yes. So you would come see us. So um, like I said, we, we will see you for all those injuries and illnesses. So we prefer that you call and make an appointment, but a lot of people don't do that or they are too busy to do so. So we do take walk-ins. Um, however, if you were just to walk in with you, there may be a little bit of a wait, or if you've been really busy that morning or afternoon, we may ask that you come back the following morning. But typically, we try to see everybody that's contacted us within 24 hours of their po first point of contact. Um, so again, the types of services we provide, uh, coughs and colds, uh, sprained ankles, we do mold removals and mold checks, um, we do allergy shots, immunizations, flu shots, and women's health care. Uh, one new thing in the policy, too, while I'm kind of on the screen, is the allergy testing is actually covered on the student insurance policy this year, and it hasn't been in the past. So if you feel that you might need allergy testing, what you would do is see one of our clinicians, talk about what your concerns are, and that would be one of the services that they could write you a referral for, and then you would just get your allergy uh, shots here in our clinic. So when visiting a doctor, whether in our facility or an outside facility, these are some things that we recommend. Um, ask questions, listen for answers, um, feel free to take notes or write things down. You can also ask for your, uh, your clinician to give you uh, what they call a discharge paperwork. So just it gives you information on what you kind of talked about that day, what medications you're on, how to take the medications appropriately. If you're currently taking any prescriptions, over-the-counter items, any sort of herbal medication, vitamins, you need to make sure you let your clinician know that because there are some prescriptions or some medications that do not mix well. So we would hate for there to be any sort of reaction should you be prescribed something that doesn't mix with what you're currently taking. Um, if you don't understand what the doctor's saying, feel free to ask again or, for ask, or to ask for it in writing. And then, if you can, but most people don't do this, um, keep a log or diary of your symptoms. So, it could just be a mental note. So, oh, hey, okay, three days ago I started having, you know, stomach pains, and then yesterday there was a headache with it, and today I just feel sore all over. The clinicians like to know how or wh when symptoms started, and then kind of how it's progressed, and how you're feeling currently. So that way they can best diagnose what you're going through, and then also give you the appropriate prescriptions or medication that you may need. So um, we are fairly easy to make an appointment with, so definitely ease of access. Um, and we are able to bill uh, your co-pays to your student account. So we could take cash, uh, checks, or credit cards in our office, but if you just don't have anything on you, we do have some people who walk over in their pajamas, so they're not carrying any money with them. So that $10 copay we can always put to your student e-bill. So next scenario, it's a Saturday afternoon and you decide to take a bike ride. 
While you're out having a good time, you hit a bump on the path and fall off your bike. You land on your ankle and can tell it's broken. What would you do? Go to the emergency room. Um, so if it's a life-threatening emergency, seek immediate attention by calling 911 or going to the emergency room nearest to you. So let's say you are not here in MC, but you're in Royal Oak. Um, Go to the emergency room that's in Royal Oak. Don't try to come back down here to go to the one in Ipsy because if it's an emergency, you need to get access to care immediately. So if you have a friend with you that can take you, that's great. Otherwise, we do um, recommend that you call an ambulance to come and pick you up and take you to the hospital. So they listed some examples of what they consider emergencies. So choking, not breathing, poisoning, severe injuries, um, seizures, any sort of weird headaches that kind of come on really strong. Um, change in mental ability, so you fell off your bike and you also hit your head, you know, and things just, you're kind of acting a little funny. So in those situations, please go to the nearest emergency room. Scenario three, it's the weekend and the health center is closed. You have a fever and have been vomiting for several hours. What would you do? So there's a couple of things you can do. So this is kind of a trick question. So you can go to urgent care, um, but there's also a hotline that's associated with the insurance company. So it's a 24-hour nurse line. This is the number here. And what you can do is you can call that number, let the nurse on the um, other line know what your symptoms are, and they can give you recommendations. So they may say, take this medication, um, over-the-counter item, try this, or they may say, you need to go to the hospital or you need to go to urgent care. Um, one thing to keep in mind, though, if you were to utilize this number and call this number, they know nothing about your insurance policy. So they couldn't tell you what's covered, how much you're responsible to pay for. They are strictly nurses who are answering and assessing your current um, physical and um, health state. <coughs> so if it's a non-emergency and we're closed, but you feel that you need to see uh, care immediately, we do, again, recommend that you go to urgent care. And the reason we keep saying that is that it's a lot cheaper to go to an urgent care center than it is to go to the emergency room. The other thing to keep in mind too, if you go to the emergency room and it's not an emergency, the insurance company can deny your claim completely. So what that means is say we, in the past we had someone go for headaches and while headaches can be very painful, um, but they had no other symptoms and they had a history of migraines. So they've always had headaches throughout their life. They went to the emergency room and the doctor says you have a headache and it's a non-emergency, the insurance company didn't cover any of the charges where they would have gone to urgent care or they would have come to us, the insurance would have covered charges for those headaches. So really only use the emergency room when there is no other option for you or if it's a true emergency. So here's some important contact information. There's a student insurance office. So our student insurance specialist is Pat Short and I'm her supervisor. But if you have any direct questions, we would recommend you call the 734-487-3048 number. And she's also the person that if you are doing waivers, you would submit a waiver to her. There's University Health Services, so that this number here, the 1122, brings you right to the front desk. There's that nurse hotline, and there's also the United Healthcare's phone number. So some other websites that are important to keep in mind is United Healthcare's website, um, which can also link you to the other two websites. I'm going to see if this will let me open it or not. Okay, so one great thing about our company is that they have gone green this year, which means they're not printing a lot of material that we have in our office. The thing that's not so great is they've gone green and we don't have a lot of material in our office. So if you're looking to get um, any type of information, so if you want to print out a brochure for your records, if you need to look at any other forms, all this stuff is going to be available to you online. They also have um, some information that I will send to Emily or somebody over there in their office to forward to you. Um, they have some publications with, and I don't know what they're called, so please bear with me. Sorry. With that little square that you click on with your phone, it takes a picture and links you to stuff. So that's on some of their publications. And they also have um, apps that you can download on your phone. So um, once you are enrolled in the policy, so technically you have coverage right now. But if you were to try to seek services outside the health center, they won't see you as having coverage because we can't load your information to United Healthcare until after the waiver period is up. 
But once that waiver period is up, what we do is we recommend that you go online and create an account. This will let you print off your insurance card. It will let you look at any claims that you've had, update your information so if you were to move or change a phone number, you want to make sure you do all those updates with United Healthcare so that way they can find you when needed or, or you can find them. So like I said, the brochure is online. So I would recommend that all of you take the time at some point um, here in the near future to look this over. It's just the, insert, the insurance policy. Um, it's 25 pages, but it does give you all the details on what's covered under the policy. So the biggest one to look at is kind of this chart right here where it talks about the different services and what you um, what your percentage is. So if you see that it says 80%, I didn't make the figure, um, or 70%. So those are the, the things that are covered under the policy. And I would just recommend that you look that over. There is a pre-existing conditions clause as part of the policy which means if there's anything that you've been diagnosed with or have been receiving treatment for in the last six months, it is not going to be covered under our insurance policy for the next six months, unless you already have coverage with somebody else. So the, the most common example we have of that is somebody who has asthma. Um, they can receive treatment here at our facility. We can certainly see them and write them prescriptions that they need, but those won't be covered under the insurance policy until they've been on the policy for six months. Let me see. One second. So just some um, billing information. So we, if you've gone on your student account, you should see that, uh, there we go. You should already see the charge on there. So for new students, the charge is $5.59. Um, it was a charge of $4.99 for your insurance coverage to start September 1st. But there's also an early arrival fee, which has you had coverage since August uh, 17th. If you did not arrive in the country until September 1st, you can bring us your plane ticket and Pat will remove that early arrival fee. So for the winter semester, you will be charged $9.98 and this um, covers you for both the winter and summer semesters. However, if you are graduating at the end of the winter semester, you can bring us your I-20 or your DS 2019 to show your graduation date and then we can remove the summer coverage for you. If you are going home for the summer, but you're still technically a student, you're not graduating, you're coming back in the fall, you are required to have insurance year-round. Any questions? Yes. Uh, I have a transfer student, so I've been in the for two years, and uh, I still got charged the $6 arrival Okay, so just um, come talk to me afterwards. I'll tell you what you need to bring to us. Because we will have it removed for you. Because if you already have, if you're going to wrap and charge your early arrival. Yes. Um, if you have a car insurance and you get in a car accident, what does it cover for? That's a great question. So um, if you have auto insurance and you get in a car accident, what does it cover? So in the state of Michigan, you are required to have car insurance. Um, however, if you get in an accident, the car insurance should cover all or most of the uh, medical bills associated with that, that accident. But then United Healthcare would be seen as a secondary provider. So if there's a few things that didn't get covered or you reach your maximums, United Healthcare then would help cover some of those costs. Um, but if you do get in a car accident, we do recommend that you um, let us know that so we can have something um, noted for you. Any other questions? Yes. So you had you had health insurance from your home country starting August first. Is that what? okay? Um, we'll need to see the information from your policy to see if it's comparable. So I can't give you a yes or no right now. You can bring that information to Pat, and she will let you know she can remove the sixty dollars fee. But that would be something that she would have to review the policy information that you have. So they should have what's called like an explanation of benefits that gives an overview of what's covered. If it meets the requirements, then she will waive that sixty dollars fee. Yeah, you need to come to our office and bring your documentation. So you need to get the explanation of benefits from your insurance company and then bring that to our office so Pat can review it. Okay, now, like, for okay. You can wait to pay the $60, but as far as the rest of it, I would probably go ahead and pay it if you have the money to do so. 
she can give she'll give you an answer right away. If she says she's gonna remove it, she can let you know like when if you come by her office today or tomorrow, she will let you know that at that time if she's gonna be able to remove the charge or not. And then she usually does within a couple days. So I should pay six dollars Yes. Um, another, yeah, go ahead. Um, who does not talk to the disability services? So you want to uh, actually contact the Disability Resource Center, depending if, you need a, if you're looking for accommodations, and they are here, I believe, in room 246 of the Student Center. And then if they're needing a doctor's note or something at that point, then you want to come to us. Um, one more thing to keep in mind that I, I don't think was in the presentation, but is important to note, um, if you are seen outside our facility for any reason, um, when you don't have a referral, it's still a good idea to contact us. So even if you're, say, down in Florida, for example, let us know that you received health care elsewhere so that we can send United Healthcare the information that you did follow up with us. But then also, if you go to urgent care on the weekends, and let's say they give you a prescription for 30 days of whatever the prescription is, you can ask them to only fill a portion of it. Because when you get a prescription filled outside the health center, you have to pay for it first. You have to send the receipt to United Healthcare, and they reimburse you 50% of the prescription cost up to $100. So let's say you get um, sick Friday night and you go to urgent care, just get enough medication to get you through the weekend, and then come see us. And then we can get, then you can just get the rest of it filled at uh, the Snow Health Center, and then it'll be only be the $10 or $20 copay depending on what the prescription is. Yes. You, it's mandatory to have insurance. You can try to do a waiver. However, you have to meet the waiver requirements. The waiver application is available online. There's also copies in our office, um, and I think OIS also has copies. So if you have a policy that meets the requirements, you are able to waive the insurance. However, we do have fairly strict requirements because there are a lot of insurance companies out there that are more travel health or catastrophic insurance companies and they don't cover very much, or they have very, very high deductibles or co-insurance, so it would be more cost-efficient to be on our policy should something happen to you. Um, mostly, most policies that are waived are those that are embassy-sponsored, or if you have um, a spouse or um, a parent that is on an employer-sponsored policy, then those will typically meet the waiver requirements, but not always. So if you have an insurance company, Bring your paperwork into us, and Pat will help you go over that um, and let you know whether it meets the waiver requirements. But do look at the information; it's pretty straightforward on the documentation. Any other questions? Uh, I have a question. Yes. I have a car. I have a car. I used to Are you referring to a car accident? So if you're like a passenger in the car, but you're not, it's not actually your car? So um, it falls in this really weird area. If you are in any type of car accident of any kind, whether you're walking across the street and somebody hits you, God forbid, or if you um, are a passenger of someone's car, the default is always the car insurance. So whether it be the other person's car insurance or your own, that is going to be the default payer. But if that's not available, so say someone hits you but then leaves the scene of the crime. I hope that never happens. First of all, file a police report. And then second of all, the insurance will cover the car the coverage um, and the cost of the, the visit that you have or follow up care. So you mean insurance coverage? Car insurance should always be the default. It should always be the one that covers the charges first. But if you if you don't know who hits you if you're walking across the street or if you're the passenger um, and the, the driver's car insurance should cover your medical expenses as well. But if it does not, then United Healthcare would provide coverage for treatment. So the car insurance always happens first, and then if they don't provide something or you've reached the maximums, then the United Healthcare would pick up the cost of those. I'm, I'm, I don't think I'm hearing you very well. Okay, so you're asking me a question. Oh, so I'm originally from Ohio, and our car insurance works a little differently. So I know Michigan has various levels of car insurance. I know there's one that's very, very low that doesn't cover anything. That would not be my recommendation, but you have to to choose the coverage that best suits your needs. 
if you're a passenger of the car, if you're a passenger, the, the driver's insurance should provide coverage. If it does not, then you can use United Healthcare. Yes. Yes, I'm sorry. So there is coverage for this policy worldwide um, for uh, international students. So if the only cover, place it doesn't cover you is your, is your home country. Um, so it has coverage whether you're here or Mexico or wherever you may be. There is coverage. Um, there's also coverage to get you if you were to in, be injured either here or outside of the United States, but not in your home country. It does provide coverage to get you back home um, if that's what you need to do. And they'll pay for like the plane ticket to get you home if that's what's needed. Yes. Yes. So as long as you meet the age requirements, the Gardasil or the HPV vaccine is covered with the student insurance. Any other questions? If you have anything else you want to ask me, I'll be down here for a few minutes. If you have anything specific or personal that you want to talk about, um, otherwise enjoy it. See best.